other than the road noise, all I can hear is birds. <laughs> no, seriously, it's very chilled, calm morning. Um, I'll come to a new section of woods. It's like a, a mixture of old and new. It's like old, it's an old sort of oldish planted pine uh, with some oak, beech, some silver birch mixed in with it. And uh, there's also lots of pheasants kicking about, which are making some very strange noises. I think uh, all the state, all the states have all had uh, birds delivered, ready for the um, shooting season, which has come around pretty quick. So the ground in here is full with activity, and also I can hear a red kite. And uh, yeah, the groundskeeper saw kicking about in his truck, checking on the birds. But yeah, what a brilliant morning. There's not a breath of fresh air. The trees have turned. Some of them have already gone past it, which is a bit of a shame. I've come to this little, mini, this little section that's sort of quite hunkered down and sheltered because of sort of patches of ambient light. But yeah, it's really, uh, really peaceful. So, I'm just going to keep looking and see if I find a shot. If I don't, I don't. If I do, happy days. Right, so for this shot, I'm shooting around a f 0 0.4 to half a second because I want a fast, sh fast ish shutter speed because it is now a little bit of a breeze. Um, and I want to shoot with an f stop of f14 ish because I've got a quite a large depth of field. I'm within two meters of this pine sort of branch coming into my left hand of my frame uh, and I am shooting quite wide I'm around oh, I say quite wide I'm around 28 mil so I'm getting this pine tree on the left and a nice branch on the on the sort of hanging down which is sort of uh, stopping your eye from traveling up out, out of the frame and we've got a nice bit of green sort of lush grass which I'm enriching by using a case polarizer spinning that polarizer because it's quite a damp forest. It's quite. Uh, it's, it's been quite atmospheric recently. Um, so there's a little bit of mist kicking about. It's quite. It's quite saturated in green and damp. So that case polarizer one cuts the glare from the ambient light that I've got, which is down here in the far distance, which is where my eye is going to lead. Well, which is your eye. Hopefully, your eyes will lead down into this little sapling down here. And I've got another one in the middle of the frame. Uh, so that's uh, that's sort of sort of that's the sort of shot I like. Um, I like a woodland scene with a little bit of a vanishing point in some ways. Um, that's kind of why I like these pines, although they're new and sometimes not very characterful. If you can find a mixture, which Savanac has, uh, and you can find these little these little gems hidden away. So yeah, that, it's quite a complicated shot. Um, I'm just gonna rattle off another exposure. Around 0.6 now, f14. Focused to, kind of to infinity. Um, I would say it's it's further into the scene than the third. Uh, I tend to find that I'm learning this this uh, 16 to 35 lens. I could put the 24 to 70 on, um, but I'm just being lazy. 
Uh, I only need around 24 to 28, so there's no point in changing lenses. Um, but yeah, depth of field is a big issue with this. Um, one, I want a fast enough shutter speed to try and freeze the little bit of movement I've got in these uh, pine branches. Two, I've got quite a lot of dark area to the left hand side of the frame, which I want to. I don't want to underexpose and have to lift the shadows, especially at ISO 640. Uh, so yeah, I'm fighting things a little bit here, um, but I think I think it really it, it really does work. It's a nice image. You sort of see this. I will leave the shadows fairly dark. I'll keep it as natural as I can. But with the ambient light that we've got running up through the right hand side, right bottom right, which goes right across the, the scene, and again. Diagonals, vanishing point. Although it's a bit yin and yang, your, I think your eye will bounce around and get drawn to this centre vanishing point. So yeah, I'm happy, but a very tricky one to expose because it's quite a large diamond range. Um, although uh, the big the big girl can handle it, um, I still want to get it right and make sure that I've got the best possible uh, amount of information. So when I go into uh, Lightroom. Also earlier, I know the breeze has eased off a little bit now, but there's still a little bit of motion. So what I was thinking of doing is um, opening up my aperture to sort of, I don't know, an f5.6 or so, get them shut speeds a lot faster. Um, take a frame with the near surroundings, uh, freeze that motion, and then in Photoshop I could, as a layer mask, I could blend in that top bit just so uh, I know that it is pin sharp um, but don't think I'm gonna have to it's ISO 640 uh, around 4, 0.4 half a second let's wait for a lull in f14 I think I can get it all in one image just thought I'd stop and show you exactly what I was talking about earlier um, with these pine forests. As you can see behind me, they're obviously planted in lines. <laughs> um, this is obviously quite uh, an artificial look to it, um, but where I was to before was just inside these little vignettes um, where there's a mixture of unkept, shall we say, that mixes in and you can kind of disguise this um, but don't be put off by coming to a pine forest like this, plantation like this um, because I do think pines look good uh, in a uh, in a forest scene um, in this country we're used to sort of looking at more oaks and ash uh, birch uh, so it's nice to come and see these conifers uh, yeah, but that's this is what I'm talking about. It does look quite nice on Instagram, but not for a portfolio. This is another little example um, with a slight twist. You can see the lines and the pot and the pines, uh, but there is a little bit of interest. There's a tree all lit up in the far distance uh, with a real heavy vignette. Let me show you with a, with a real heavy vignette like this. You can start to see where the image or possible image could be. Um, and this is this is what I was just saying, you know, don't be put off by coming to these plantations because um, there are little gems. Uh, although they're, it's not a big redwood, uh, but you know, 
this is the UK. Quite a nice scene, nevertheless. Right, let's keep scouting. I think... I think there's an image here. I just love these shadows. These shadows are awesome. Uh, again, it's a pine or conifer, whatever you want to call them, which are pretty blah, but I like the layers, the cut, the green with the polarizer, case polarizer, just looks like carpet and it's all lit up from above. So I think I might get myself set up and uh, let's take an image here. Now this shot is all about them shadows. Well, that's, that's exactly what drew me to it, was the soft shadows on the foreground. Um, I am getting a little bit of light from behind you. Just casting some really harsh uh, streaks across my frame. And I, as nice as that is, I do kind of like the softer diffused. Um, I think if you get them real harsh, bright areas in your frame, doesn't really work. It doesn't really work for me anyway. So I'm around a second. I'm not too worried about shutter speed in this because I've got a lot of dead foliage in front of me. The branches are just twigs um, and what's out in the far distance is going to be soft anyway. Because I'm only worried about this foreground, uh, this, this first sort of third into the midground, I'm, I'm not too worried about the far distance. I'm going to shoot an F8 focus on these two trees in front of me see what depth of field that gives me if I feel like I want to stretch that depth of field out I will probably go up to f11 f13 um, and focus maybe a third of the way into the frame that's going to give me front to almost back focus uh, well it will give me back front to back focus but because it's such a busy scene um, that light and that greenery in the far distance is, is, is going to be blurry with a little bit of motion blur from the, from the breeze that, that's kicking about at the moment. Um, again, a yin and yang image, um, but I think them highlights and them bright colours that are enhanced by the case polarizer, which also cuts a little bit of glare, um, will pull you through this dead section, uh, which you will initially see, uh, because I'm fairly close. I'm around two and a half, three metres close, uh, as close to these first trees. Um, and then it's a nice bit of ambient, ambient light hitting them. The one on the right is particularly interesting. Um, it just, I think this image shows, it portrays old and new, the dead and the, and the, and the full of life. Um, Obviously these, these look dead, I know they're not dead, but where they don't get the sunlight down where I am it stops, it stops any sort of growth and then everything grows above obviously where it can see the sun um, and then obviously in the far distance where you've got these channels which are caused by the trees, the plantation being planted in lines because I'm sat at 90 degrees to them not looking down them, you can't tell that um, so I'm using it to my advantage because we've got loads of these lines being at 90 degrees you get nice layers of light and beams, diagonals and you've got the mixture of old and new trees there are some um, sort of oaks in, in the far distance that are all leafed up with a little bit of colour yeah am I selling it to you? <laughs> yeah it, it looks really smart um, F8 a second, ISO 100, I've dropped my ISO back down to 100 now. I could go down to 50. Um, let's go down to 50. Um, I'll have to boost my exposure by half a stop. Double my exposure, sorry. Two seconds. And we'll take an image 
at ISO 50 to see if there's any, uh, obviously there might be slight slight increases in quality but when you've got a 61 megapixel I'm not going to, I don't think you'll notice between 100 and ISO 100 and ISO 50 um, that, is, that is a classic of uh, upgrading to a new camera and being stuck to ISO 100 on the little D7200 <laughs> I keep forgetting I can go down to ISO 50 but yeah the the light is very nice really nice so what I'll do now like I said is just play with my depth of field have a look at the images on the playback on the back of the screen pinch and zoom in and make sure that I've got sharpness where I want it um, I'm not underexposing or overexposing my highlights or shadows and uh, yeah we're on for a winner now I just thought I'd uh, bring you to the back of the camera and just show you exactly what I'm doing um, this is the image I've just taken and you can see these sort of soft ambient highlights um, which are illuminating these trees now to the naked eye um, uh, without <laughs> without bragging that's something I look for it's something I can see um, it's something that you have to train yourself and to look out for um, to the point where you will find it faster but as you can see here I've had to go, what I've done is I've gone to f11 because I wanted these middle trees and this one here um, sharp so I've had to go to f11 and kept my ISO at 100 because I want maximum quality and I've gone down to 4 seconds because nothing is moving like I've already said um, but yeah you can see these these shadows that are forming and it's just lovely and soft and ambient and I'm just going to keep my histogram um, just left of middle um, so I'm retaining these highlights I'm not blowing any of these highlights out but at the same time um, I'm far enough to the right that if I wanted to I could lift some of these shadows here um, and yeah that I focused I have focused down on this tree here as you can see I do manually focus I, ha I know you can see a red box there um, but what I normally do is I grab the front uh, ring I pinch and I find the tree I want. This is the one on the right. Uh, let me find it. And that's the one on the left. And I just pinch and I find my my sweet spot. Um, I have got the ability to use peeking. Um, I've custom it customizes this button here. I do use it. Um, I find when I'm trying to focus um, really precisely it can just be distracting you either got to really trust it or turn it off and just I just always trying to check it with my eye um, because maybe I don't really 100% trust it but yeah that's this is what I thought um, I thought I'd just show you exactly what I'm doing I like this tree on the left uh, your eyes being cast here this one is got a bit more character it's got some more more prongs and as you can see this is these highlights I was talking about earlier um, I don't really think they work, I think they make the shot very hard to compose. I will take an image and I'll probably put side by side images up so you can see uh, exactly what I mean. It might, it might work, it might not, um, but yeah. So I think I'm pretty much done. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's, it's been a nice chilled su uh, sort of sunrise video in the woods. This is what I absolutely love. Um, I do apologise. I think the, the quality of my images and the quality of my content has dipped um, the last month. Um, I have struggled to keep up with the one video a week. Uh, so. This is the first time I've been out in the morning where I've actually been had plenty of time for a lot for a long time. Um, so thank you so much for, for those of you who have stuck with me. Um, it's a classic YouTube thing, and I know you hear us content creators mention it all the time. It's quality over co uh, co con volume over qual quantity over quality. Um, and sometimes you have to swing swing that in and around. Uh, unfortunately. 
um, if you want to put stuff out every week, uh, which I do. I do want to, at the same time, this is my life. Uh, obviously I have a day job, but this is my YouTube life. Uh, so I think it's important that you guys see the ups and the downs. Um, and that's exactly how it is. Uh, we all have our own uh, commitments, issues, problems, jobs, blah, 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 blah. So you know, I, I, that's why I like to keep up the one video a week. Um, plus I absolutely love doing it. So yeah, this is a, this is a scene uh, we just talked about behind me. I'm still here, I'm still shooting it. Uh, I probably will put up a, a comparison so you can see the light versus the flat ambient light. Um, hang on a minute. Do apologise for the uh, plane noise. Yeah, I'm still taking shots. I'm still around four seconds. Um, so yeah, two images in the bag. I'm happy. I think I'm more happy with this one than I am the first one. Uh, but the trick is not to panic. Just go for a walk, uh, and you never know what you might uh, come up with. So yeah, I'm Photo Ninja. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you do fancy coming with me in the woods uh, and taking stuff like this uh, one to one basis, I have got quite a few one-to-ones booked in uh, for what now what we now October and November but nothing in December as we stand uh, so yeah if you are interested in a one-to-one -one workshop or maybe a group of two or three at the most then um, head to photoninjaphotography.com uh, all the stuff will be down below the links blah blah, blah all the details are on my website um, yeah so right I'm going to go because I went to the gym this morning, now I've been out here for two hours, I am starving and I need a shower. <laughs> Ciao, I'll see you next week, bye.